In this video, I'm going to go over many of the signs, symptoms, and scenarios that may be indicators that you're struggling with ADHD. Coming up. Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Journey to Wellness. And here on this channel, I like to bring awareness to ADHD in adulthood and talk about what it's truly like to have it. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on one of my videos. Now let's jump into today's video. If you're watching this video, chances are you either suspect you have ADHD, the person who sent it to you suspects you have ADHD, or you've fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole while you're supposed to be doing something else, in which case you might have ADHD. Now, I'm not gonna spend any time going over what ADHD is. I've already covered that in another video you can see right here. We'll go ahead and start with the symptoms listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, also known as the DSM-5, which is the book that doctors use to match various symptoms up to a diagnosable disorder. It sums up ADHD as a persistent pattern of inattention, hyperactivity, or impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development as characterized by sections one and two. Section one being primarily inattentive symptoms, section two being primarily hyperactive and impulsive symptoms. Now it says you need to have six or more of these symptoms that have lasted at least six months to a degree that is inconsistent with developmental level and that negatively impacts directly on social and academic or occupational activities. It also says take note that symptoms are not solely a manifestation of oppositional behavior, defiance, hostility, or failure to understand tasks or instructions. Now for older adolescents and adults, anyone over the age of 17, you only need five of these symptoms to qualify. These symptoms are often fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes in schoolwork, at work, or doing other activities. For example, overlooks or misses details, or work is inaccurate. Often has difficulty sustaining attention in tasks and play activities. For example, has difficulty remaining focused during lectures, conversations, or lengthy reading. Often does not seem to listen when spoken to directly. For example, the mind seems elsewhere, even in the absence of an obvious distraction. Often does not follow through on instructions and fails to finish schoolwork, chores, or duties in the workplace. For example, starts tasks but quickly loses focus and is easily sidetracked. Often has difficulty organizing tasks and activities. For example, difficulty managing sequential tasks difficulty keeping materials and belongings in order, messy, disorganized work, has poor time management, fails to meet deadlines, often avoids, dislikes, or is reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental focus. For example, schoolwork or homework. For older adolescents and adults, preparing reports, completing forms, and reviewing lengthy papers. Often loses things necessary for tasks or activities. For example, school materials, pencils, books, tools, wallets, keys, paperwork, eyeglasses, and mobile phones. Is often easily distracted by extraneous stimuli. For older adolescents and adults, this may include squirrel or just unrelated thoughts. Is often forgetful in is often forgetful in everyday activities. For example, doing chores or running errands. For older adolescents and adults, returning calls, paying bills, and keeping appointments. Now that was section one, which is focused on the primarily inattentive symptoms. Section two is focusing on the hyperactivity and impulsive symptoms. And just like before, as an adult, you need to have at least five of these symptoms and have been experiencing them for at least the last six months. And they are often fidgets with or taps hands or feet or squirms in seat. Often leaves seat when remaining seated is expected. For example, 
leaves his or her place in the classroom, in the office or other workplace, or other situations that require remaining in place. Often runs about or climbs in situations where it's inappropriate. Note that in older adolescents and adults, this may just be limited to a feeling of internal restlessness. Often unable to play or engage in leisure activities quietly. Is often on the go, acting as if driven by a motor. For example, is often unable to be or uncomfortable being still for extended time, as in restaurants or meetings. This may be experienced by others as being restless or difficult to keep up with. Often talks excessively. Often blurts out an answer before a question can be completed. For example, completes other people's sentences or cannot wait for their turn in a conversation. Has difficulty waiting his or her turn. For example, waiting in line. Often interrupts or intrudes on others. For example, butts into conversations, games, or activities. May start using other people's things without asking or receiving permission. For older adolescents and adults, may intrude or just take over what others are doing. Now, in addition to needing to have five or more of the symptoms listed in sections one or two, there are a few more criteria that need to be met. Several inattentive or hyperactive impulsive symptoms were present before age 12. Several inattentive or hyperactive impulsive symptoms were present in two or more settings. For example, at school, home, or work with friends or relatives, or in other activities. The symptoms do not occur exclusively in the course of schizophrenia or another psychotic disorder and are not better explained by some other mental disorder. For example, mood disorder, anxiety disorder, disassociative disorder, personality disorder, substance intoxication, or withdrawal. Now most of you are probably nodding your head going, yep, that describes me. But I think that more real-world examples could be added to the criteria. Now, these are in no particular order. I had originally wanted to organize them in categories pertaining to each specific executive function. But then I thought, f*** it. This is where ADHD thrives. So here's a list of a bunch of different ways that ADHD messes with us. See how many you can identify with. You feel as though you've lived a lifetime of chronic underachievement. You suffer from depression caused by living a life full of failure and disappointment. You would rather eat a bullet than be stuck behind a desk in a cubicle. You use the shape filing system. Stacks, heaps, and piles everywhere. In spite of this, you can usually find what you're looking for about 80% of the time. The other 20% where you can't find something leads you to either tear your entire house apart or start cleaning it and you promptly stop cleaning once you find the thing you're looking for. The only thing you can do consistently is procrastinate. You've always had trouble holding on to friends. You go through romantic relationships like underwear. You go through jobs like underwear. Your handwriting is so bad, sometimes you can't even read it yourself. I legit had a hard time reading the word handwriting. If procrastination was an Olympic sport, you'd take gold for your country. You find that you do your best work at the last minute. You handle high pressure situations surprisingly well, more so than others. You impulsively spend money that you need it for something else. Your impulsive spending is the reason why Facebook ads are so damn successful. When one of your kids is in trouble, you yell out an entire list of all of your kids' names and even the dog's name before you get to the one you're actually mad at. When you first meet someone and introduce yourself, you immediately forget their name. No matter how hard you try to repeat it and remember it, it's gone five seconds later. You can't remember if you are coming from or going into a room. If a TV is on, you can't help but watch it, regardless if whatever's on you find interesting or not. You're like a moth to a flame with the box filled with colorful flashing pictures. You find yourself eating mostly out of boredom. You drink alcohol most every night because it seems to be the only thing that actually quiets your mind. You smoke weed for the same reason. You smoke cigarettes, particularly if you smoke a pack a day or more. This also applies to dip. You tend to get very little or poor sleep. You lie in bed for what seems like, or sometimes is hours before falling asleep because your brain just won't shut the hell up. You consider yourself a night owl and seem to come alive when the sun is setting. You do your best work at night because it's quieter and less distracting and your brain is just humming away. You sleep like a dead person. 
and have a hard time resurrecting yourself in the morning. Mornings are not your friend. You don't snooze your alarm so much as you just never heard it. During the day, you get ridiculously tired and can fall asleep at the drop of a hat if you just stop for a moment and relax. During sex, you have a hard time focusing and staying engaged with your partner. This applies to both men and women. Or you have a hypersexuality about you, almost to the point to thinking you might be a sex addict. This also applies to both men and women. You skip from one incompleted task to another. At the slightest snub from someone, or the hint that you've done something wrong, you either get explosively angry, or you get crippled by fear and anxiety that you've lost that person's love, respect, or acceptance. This is known as rejection sensitive dysphoria, and it's something that most everybody with ADHD experiences. And while rejection is something that nobody likes, when you have ADHD, the response to it, it's far more severe than what a neurotypical person feels. You've been in multiple car accidents, some of which were actually your fault. You've had many close calls while driving. When you drive, you find it hard to keep your attention completely on the road and on the other cars around you. You have multiple parking tickets because you just didn't have the time to find a legit spot and you'd only be admitted anyway. Or you actually parked in a legit spot but either misread the parking sign or you failed to read it at all. You've had multiple speeding tickets, either currently or in the past, have had your license revoked or suspended. You speed everywhere you go because everyone around you just moves so goddamn slow, or you just like the thrill of going fast. You've been known to be singing a song in the car, stop mid-verse to cuss some other driver out, then go right back to singing the song without missing a beat. Without being tired, you frequently can drive home and honestly have no clue as to how you got there. You tend to get distracted while driving and somehow end up driving to work on autopilot. No matter the event, you're known amongst friends and family as the one who's always fashionably late. Other than work, you can't seem to show up anywhere on time. And on time to work means usually by the skin of your teeth. You have two ways of classifying time now and not now. And not now usually means never until it becomes right now. All your life, you've been told about how much potential you have and how you could make something good of it if you just tried harder. You get all excited and gung-ho about starting a new project, but as soon as you run into some sort of unexpected problem, your fire just sort of fizzles out and it never winds up getting done. You constantly lust and obsess over something you want to buy, and you can't get it out of your head until either you buy it, or you realize it's just financially not feasible. But when you do buy the thing, you wind up playing with it for a day or two, and then find yourself obsessing over the next thing you want to buy. You try to save money for emergencies only, and everything winds up becoming an emergency. It takes you considerably longer to do things and complete tasks when compared to other people or other co-workers. When you're hyper-focused, you can finish eight hours of work in four. When solving an interesting problem, you're like a dog with a bone, and you'll continue working on it long after others would have given up. You hate waiting in line so much, you plan your shopping and your errand running around how many people are out and about. You easily become frustrated, almost explosively angry, but then calm five minutes later. Open mouth, insert foot, should be tattooed somewhere on your body. You constantly think to yourself, ooh, I shouldn't have said that. You can relate to the phrase, hold my beer, on a whole deeper level than most. In spite of doing well at school, you know that you never got to reach your full potential. Or you got through school purely on your high intelligence level but you still found it ridiculously harder than most other kids. In spite of all of your friends goofing off in class, you, for some reason, were always the one singled out as causing the problem. In school, you were always separated from the bulk of the classroom and made to sit somewhere by yourself, usually up against a wall or in a corner somewhere. You've always had a habit of forgetting important items, school papers, flash drives, work reports, etc. Despite doing your best to pay attention during the meeting, you can never seem to remember what the key takeaways were. You constantly forget simple verbal instructions and are too embarrassed to ask to have them repeated because you know that most people would have just remembered. 
you don't read books or hardly anything at all because you have to reread every sentence or even every paragraph just for it to sink in. Or you wind up reading half a page or even more just to realize that you've read every single word, but you don't have the foggiest clue as to what you just read. Either one-on-one -on -one or in a group, you easily lose track of conversations. You become so focused on the effort and the act of just listening to someone that you don't actually comprehend what they're saying. You seem to thrive in high stress or high intensity situations, and you always thought you would have made a good soldier, firefighter, police officer, EMT, emergency room personnel, salesperson, or stock trader. You either have or have had one of these jobs before. I personally think I would have made a damn good race car driver. You have blood relatives that have been diagnosed with ADHD. Your performance and success at accomplishing goals, it's so sporadic that you have a hard time trusting in your own abilities. In other words, when things go right, you attribute it to the stars aligning and not to the effort that you put in. You do this because you, honest to God, have no clue why you were able to do the thing this time and not all the other times in the past. This not only causes you to feel unreliable, but it causes others to think that all the times that you had failed in the past were because you either didn't care or because you weren't trying hard enough. You're an entrepreneur and either can't stand working for someone else and need to do things your own way or because you perform poorly at most jobs due to things like time constraint and deadlines. And this has led you to the freedom and flexibility of entrepreneurship. Either way, this is the best thing you've ever done in your working career. Now, keep in mind, the tricky thing about ADHD is that many of the problems that we experience are things that every single person struggles with from time to time. And even neurotypical people can identify with a lot of the struggles that we have. However, there are two very distinct things that the average person cannot relate with. And that would be the frequency in which these things happen and the history. How long have these things actually been a problem for you? If some of these things happen to you sometimes or just every once in a while, you probably have nothing to worry about. But if these sorts of things are happening several times a week or even on a daily occurrence, yeah, that often, then you may want to consider getting a proper evaluation and diagnosis, which it should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I am not a doctor and I cannot diagnose you. This video cannot diagnose you. But if this video speaks deeply to you, then I would suggest that you seek the help of a trained professional. And if you got value out of this video, could you do me a huge favor and smash that like button? It really helps out the channel with the YouTube algorithm. Also, let me know in the comments sections what topics you want me to cover next. And remember to subscribe for more videos and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on when they come out. And until next time, take care of yourself and be well.